Hello everybody, welcome back to my highly entertaining show. It is July the 7th and today is Friday and I'm about to go on my hour and 46 minute run and basically I'm doing tomorrow's long run today so that I can spend tomorrow's long day doing a good amount of work. Not that this isn't work, but this is self-interest work in the interest of paying myself first and paying myself in interest. So on today's topic, I'd like to discuss something that makes many of us uncomfortable, and that's the issue of our burial system in this nation. Now, I've heard it said that in Japan and possibly several other areas that are limited in terms of space available for the people, the only option when it comes to our burial services, our final uh, arrangements services is cremation. Because basically there's no space, you know? And if we think about it, and if we think about this nation and the way that we talk about property being already scarce and limited, and if we start to talk about it for long enough, and we recognize that our populations are about as large as they have been in previous epochs or epics, then we'll start to recognize that in order to build more real estate, we might have to build on the graves of others, not unlike what has been done before. In other words, we ourselves might currently be and are almost certainly on someone else's grave. That's just the way of life. Life is that. It's building up, decaying of, and recycling and repurposing of materials. Now, my question is, in this long, introduced, well-thought-out, conversational opportunity, my question is, does that make it okay to continue to uphold the previous teachings of our fathers which include the general practice of pumping a body full of chemicals, toxic chemicals basically carrying out an embalming process for the, for the wealthy, you know? Because all these things are services and we're paying for it. And we're, we're not quite paying attention either because it's been so programmed that we don't have to think about it. This is just the way it has to be for health reasons and, and, and so forth. We, we have to, we have to figure out for whatever reason, we don't, actually we don't have to figure it out. For health reasons and because of the fact that this is what our nation taught to our fathers, we continue to buy up these services that include but are not limited to actually pumping a body full. Think about think about how large our bodies are. And think about what we're doing to the entire body. And then think about the real estate that it's costing that some of our wealthy quote unquote wealthy some of our well off people don't really think twice about the way it's been done because they feel that's just the way it's going to continue to be done until some new system comes into play well how is it that we're going to come up with a new system if we're unable to communicate about these things. So so my question is, what do you think about burial? Do you want to 
you can make your own video. This is a hard topic to sum up in, in like a sentence or two. However, if you're for the current system in place in the United States, or even globally in terms of how we generally tend to think about what we're supposed to do with our deceased, is this the way to do it or not? Yay or nay? Please leave your information your, your response in the comments with a yay or nay. For me, I believe that there are a lot of wasteful practices going on right now. And for several of them, I don't quite have an alternative to pick from easily. But in general, I have recognized that that's because of a communication breakdown with our fathers. Speaking of, I wonder if any of our fathers, any of my fathers, any of the people who I've looked up to as male role models are able to participate in this conversation. I truly hope so, because you're really the persons who I'm speaking with, and the only reason why I've selected to even call out a gender or a, a role model specifically is because that's also something that was a construct of our fathers. We have ideals that are fast evolving. Let's say for an example with regard to gender. We don't really know what it is that we're setting loose, but we know that we want to hold so firmly onto these other values, like whether or not we embalm somebody prior to burial. We want to hold on to so many of these different aspects so much that we just don't even bother to acknowledge the conversation in the room. You know, a lot of people are worried about the elephant in the room. Don't worry. The elephants are hardly going to be able to survive either with our continued marching towards inaction. Until we actually start putting the actions to the words, until we start putting the proverbial uh, money where our mouths are, we're going to have some trouble. We're going to continue to have trouble. And the trouble with not planning for having trouble also lends to a Murphy's Law type situation. If we don't plan for these difficult times, we're going to be cutting things so close, so thin, that we're going to encounter circumstances that we weren't quite expecting. When was the last time that you had a near ambush attack by a wild animal that was thinking about consuming you? If you haven't been out into these places of wilderness, you might never ever see the activity that's happening between wildlife and what dominant wildlife can do to nearly helpless wildlife. It's a food chain. We are living in a ginormous food chain on, a, on, on, a, on someone else's graves. And... For whatever reason, in this era of civility, we have the hardest time having the most basic conversations with the people even who we think that we are able to associate with. The people who would theoretically know us the best. They don't really know us. Like we don't know them. There was this one speaker of peace who at some point in the dialogues was recorded as having said, I never knew you at all. And that's basically the way that we might look at one another when we find out that someone's views are just slightly different. Well, for me, the reason that I am not in favor of our current burial system, uh, it, it amounts to, again, unnecessary some of the unnecessary ritualistic services that we provide to one another in exchange for paper currency 
which has basically no weight, is just not quite the way it's supposed to be. It's a very close representation, but it doesn't factor in unnecessary expenditures. And it doesn't factor in that some of the things that we've covered up were never allowed to be revealed because of, again, the teachings of our fathers. So for everyone who understands what I'm talking about, again, I hope that you left a comment in the comments area. I hope that you've brought your families together so that we could have these talks in person and so that we could talk about what comes next. Because in today's nation, the leaders are few and far between and the ones that are in place don't even really care when you bring to them any kind of situation. For an example, a near ambush attack in a national park, which was ironically followed up within that very span of time, like about probably one week or, or so with an actual ambush attack that was successful. It was in a different area. But the purpose is to say, if we don't recognize the dangers that are starting to occur because of our passivity, our continued desire to live in the lap of comfort, if we never recognize that, and if our mothers can't find the time to bring the conversations between their, ch their own children and their basic levels of comfort in the form of their spouses, that's a shame on all of us. That's a communication breakdown. So that's why I'm attempting to continue to communicate here in a way that is constructive. There's nothing destructive about what I'm saying. The, the, the end of certain practices doesn't mean, oh, we've destroyed that industry. It simply means we have resources to start figuring out what to do with the rest of this time that we've been allowed to spend with one another, bringing joy to one another, finding fellowship with one another, and learning with one another. What amount of fun can surpass that learning with one another having fun with one another isn't that what it's all about well anyway so here i go alone to take on the circumstances that i've described which are to enjoy a super long run i don't know what i'm going to encounter the drainages are all probably flooded and overflown muddy But look, look at how the sun has been blocked out for our enjoyment of this day to spend getting ready for what comes next and or simply enjoying what happens right now with those who care to share those experiences with one another. Until next time, peace, love, all that old school stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for communicating with me. I've had some difficulty communicating with a lot of people recently. It seems like I touch on a nerve when we start discussing topics that come out of books of peace. It seems that I touch on a nerve when we talk about the fact that there are various books of peace, all with their own time frame and lineage and description. And it turns out that I can touch on people's nerves by talking about topics like, what do we think about this burial system here in the nation? The only way that someone's going to hear about what we think about it is by seeing the actual comments, by seeing the, the subscriberships, by seeing the results of the people who are shining as brightly as they can. There's a problem with shining too brightly among all the darkness. The darkness really wants to obliterate those things that bring light. If I'm a light bringer, 
there's probably a lot of people that might want to obliterate the light that I'm bringing. And a lot of people might have different reasons. We are all imperfect. And at the same time, we don't have to continue to follow the imperfect practices of basic our fathers without participation. So here's to participation points. The award goes to all of you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for talking about these things with your own families. Thank you for understanding we are our own families. And thanks for continuing to wish me well and success the same way that I wish you well and success. Health is wealth. Protect yours, not at all costs. Just protect yours as if you were a kid having fun playing keep away. Protect your wealth. Protect your health. Till next time.